Thanks for being a part of the uh, coming to church family time, and uh, it's it's wonderful to be with you. I love being with um, with my people at church, and uh, it does my soul good. In fact, it's the place where I grow, and uh, and God does good things, and and and, and it's challenging. And uh, you know the great thing about uh, the Lord is He doesn't want to keep us uh, in that same spot where we're at. He wants us just to continue to grow and become what He's called us to be. Um, because you, uh, as wonderful as you are, there's a, there's a, there's greatness in your tomorrow. There's actually something better, something brighter going on. And that's not that um, because uh, we don't love you the, the way the way you are. We do. We love you, warts and all. Um, you know, I, know, I don't see many warts around the place, but um, if you were a wart, uh, that's what uh, one of my girl, one of my sister's boyfriends used to call me wart, and uh, I reject that. <laughs> but um, you know, uh, God, God has just got something better and greater for each one of us, and He's got something wonderful for you this week. And uh, do you believe that? Does God have something greater for you? Uh, something wonderful, and uh, I, I truly believe he does. Um, the, the great thing about God is he makes the unimaginable become our pathway to greater things. Uh, he, be, he makes the unmanageable, unimaginable, I should say, become a pathway to greater things. And uh, it, that is difficult for us to comprehend today because we are risk adverse we don't want to uh, feel any negative emotion. We don't want to. Uh, we, we think when something's going wrong that we've got to take a detour. But the Spirit of the Lord, is, he, he says to mountains, move, not go around them. But yet we want to go around and we want to put a whole lot of sun, like, you know, wet floor. Do not, uh, like, what we need is vision and the ability to see what's going in front of us. And we can't do that by ourselves spiritually. For us to see uh, a spiritual hardship in front of us, things to overcome, we have to be able to see something greater than just mountains. False prophets just will tell you about how bad the mountain is. Um, I go on a bit, a bit about this. Uh, if you've been around for a while, you, you'll hear me have a go at false prophets because all they know is how to say bad. That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. I had one particular false prophet say to me uh, one day, oh, uh, just, just when COVID hit, oh, that's the, this is the end of the organised church. And I'm like, the prophet of doom speaks again. How wrong he was. I wish he was here today. Under that, because it'd be like, sit down, you're not a prophet. All you can do is call out the bad and the wicked in the world. That's not pr prophet, that's just having, you know, that's just being alive. If you can just see the bad, right, and all the difficult things, your vision is filled with improbability. Your vision is filled with a lack of faith. Ooh, yeah, I have lack of faith. And you and I suffer from a lack of faith. Because when we see something and we see that thing is going to, that issue, that circumstance is going to dictate my life, the eyes of faith says there's something greater beyond that. And that's difficult. That takes faith. That takes a gift from the Lord. That takes me getting down on my knees. Not pointing at, oh, the church hasn't done that on me. Wife didn't do this or the government do that. No, I've got to get down on my knees and I've got to ask the Creator for something greater. Say it with me. I'm going to ask the Creator for something greater. <laughs> Not just going to be a prophet of doom. There's plenty of them around the place. You only have to go to work, right? How you going? Oh, if only the Lord would come again. I'm like, well, maybe he won't come for you, mate. I wouldn't say that, but that's what I'm... <laughs> Sometimes I'm naughty. <laughs> Let's go to Exodus. Moses is presented. The people of Israel are presented with a super big problem because they're in slavery. Back in the day, they just, they got it tough, right? They've been beaten. The women taking any time they you know, wanted from them, the children taken away. That, that slavery is a bad thing. Bad, bad, bad. They're under this terrible persecution. 
But here it is, the people of God, God doesn't want them to stay there. He doesn't want me to stay on this side of the mountain. He doesn't want me to stay on this side of the sea. He doesn't want me to stay on this side of suffering. So Moses has taken the people out of Egypt and he's got a big problem right in the way. It's called the Red Sea. And in between freedom is this great sea and behind him is chasing up his suffering. Behind him is chasing his Egypt. To, behind him is chasing his poverty. Behind him is chasing, you know, the, the, the rego check and the, and, and, the, and the doctors. Behind him, it's all chasing up on him. In front of him, he's got a bigger problem even than that. The whole nation are there looking to him. Mind you, they're a bunch of grumblers too. God knows our grumblings. Praise God, we have a mediator, someone to stand in the gap. Verse 21. Then Moses stretched out in his hand over the sea. And all that night the Lord drove the sea back. How long did it take? All that night. You know? Sometimes I got pictures, you know, of Charlton Heston and, you know, the old Hollywood, and the whole sea just. No, this took all night. There is often a night before you come into your miracle, right? We gotta can't be afraid of the night. Sometimes Jesus was in the grave for three days. It was dark. It was he had to go somewhere that wasn't appealing to him. He had to go somewhere to defeat the powers that be there to preach the good news. See, in your dark isn't it isn't the place where you go, oh woe is me. In your dark, three days from time is resurrection life. It's the power of Jesus. But we can't stay in the dark, we can't stay in the light. And what will keep us there is our attitude. Because our attitude is, connect, is right in here. It's spiritual. Your attitude is spiritual because it'll impact what you think and what you believe, friend. And we can't stay in a dark time because we were never built for the dark. You were never built for the dark. You were built for the light. You were built for the light. He is a light that shines unto your path. He is the light. And He's calling each one of us into the light. But He's not afraid of the dark. I was afraid of the dark when I was a kid, were you? Like, you know, in the house, I can remember, you know, when Dad would ask me to go to his, the back bathroom to go get something for him, and I was at the front, and all the lights were off. And like, I'd be like, I would sprint all the way to the bathroom, get what he wanted. And, you know, sometimes I just, I would clean myself up literally in the dark, because I'd hit a wall, bang, and then I'd, I'd keep... We're scared of the dark, so, so that, that fearful place. But that, that, in that place, you, your heart just has to turn. What did Moses do? He stretched out his hand. In our dark place, we just got to stretch out our hand towards the Lord. Just put your hands up in the air. I invite you to. Close your eyes if you want. Put your hands up in the air. Say, so here's a light. In my darkness, is a light in my darkness. So I stretched hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. Like there's two miracles going on there, right? Dry land. Should be muddy. You should get stuck. We sort of think that God's just going to remove the... Um, you know, we just see the problem, but he makes a way. You see, not only he makes the whole way. It's like, oh well, you know, God came this far, but you know, he doesn't really do that anymore. So anyone say he doesn't really heal anyone? He doesn't really restore people? He doesn't really do that anymore because the problem gets in the way again. But not only did he remove the sea, he gave them dry land. He gave them a highway. 
The waters were divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud uh, at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. That's what the enemy is. It's a place of confusion. He jammed the wheels of their chariots so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Egypt is the place of slavery. Say, the Lord is fighting for me. The Lord is fighting. Say it like you believe it. The Lord is fighting for me. He is. He's for you. He's for you. He's not against you. It's like, oh, I did something this week, so I'm, uh, you know, bad tree, I'm under judgment. No, the Lord is fighting for you. The religious spirit wants to say, yes, you really bad, wicked thing. But the spirit of Jesus says, I'm fighting for you. I'm fighting for you. I'm fine. Don't let the religious spirit get on you. He gets on you. He wants to put confusion on you. He wants you to make confused about where you belong. Oh, you know. I don't belong there with those people. The spirit of the, of the enemy wants to confuse you of where you belong and who you belong with. And that's what was happening to the, the Israelite army. The confusion came upon them. And they were like, the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Woo! Who's with me today? Can you sense what's going on here? Then the Lord said to Moses, uh, have I done that bit? Uh, stretch, out, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. Like Moses has been going for many, many days now, right? Many, many days. And he's still going at daybreak, went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea, not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their what? They put their trust in Him. They put their trust in Him. In the dark time, I put my trust in Him. When I don't feel like I've got enough money, I put my trust in Him. When I feel like everything in the world is coming against me, I put my trust in Him. Who do I put my trust in? Not in my bank account. I'm not going to put it there. I'm not going to put it. Uh, I'm going to put it in, in the TV and the Netflix. I'm not going to put it on my. I'm going to put my trust in Him. Where are you going to put your trust? Amen. This is interesting. And in Moses' his servant. You see, for you to get to where you're going, somebody else is going to be there going before you. And we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Whew. You know, I want to talk a bit about today about building highways. Building highways. Because we really want to connect with the will and direction of God. What is the will of God that is, that is the direction of God? Is to, uh, if we talk about repentance, it's about pulling myself into alignment with God. And, and, and I've done myself a dis disservice, and I think the body of Christ, we've done ourselves as a disservice. When we, when we talk about repentance as just this whole 180 thing, no, repentance is about aligning yourself to God's thoughts about you, about his word about you about his actions, about his feelings towards you. God loves you so dearly. Uh, have you you've got to turn your eyes to the one who loves you dearly. You're feeling alone today. You've got to turn your eyes to the one who said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You know, if you're feeling um, downtrodden today, you turn your eyes um, to the one who says, I, uh, in the, even in the, in the miry clay, I'll lift you up. You see, this is, requires a church that's full of faith. It doesn't just have religion. It needs a church filled with people with faith. Don't 
got to have an amen in the place. You've got to have faith. You've got to have faith. I won't sing that song here. A bit. <laughs> Let's go to the scriptures. Isaiah 57, 14 to 15. I love Isaiah. He, just, he had a vision of the Saviour. He saw the restoration of God's people and he gave his life to it. In verse 14, and it will be said, build up, build up. What do we do? Not pull down. That cuts out all our gossip. Build up, build up. Prepare the road. Remove the obstacles out of the way of my people. For this is what the high and exalted one says, he who lives forever, whose name is holy, I live in a high and holy place, but also with the one, what? what? He lives in a high place, but who else? With the one who is contrite and lowly in spirit. To revive the spirit of the lonely and to revive the heart of the contrite. Friends, revival is not what we've got, but revival is a matter of our heart before the Lord. It's revival we say is, you know, we're always looking for revival out there, but revival starts in here. Revival starts with you and I needing God. And he will revive what? Your spirit. You know, have your own little personal revival with the spirit of the Lord. But it takes what? It takes someone to say, how humble is this? I need, I, I, I'm totally dependent on you for this God. I'm totally dependent on you for this God. I'm totally dependent on for you, this God, you know. He, he, he goes on to say this, pass through, pass through the gates. Prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway. I believe that sign's out the front. Remove the stones and raise a banner for the nations. The Lord has made proclamation to the ends of the earth, say to daughter Zion, see your saviour comes. See his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. In other words, he's got something to bring to you. He's got something that was lost and needs to be found. There was something stolen that will be brought back. It's his recompense. Say, God's got recompense coming to me. It accompanies him. He is never empty handed. God's never empty handed. He is not the one who comes and says false promises and false hope. Recompense accompanies him. They will be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you will be called sought after. Oh, it's like, oh. What do you got? You'll be called sought after. In other words, you got something that they want. Do, do you actually have something that they want? You see, if, if the guy you hang around has always got recom, if he's always got something accompanying him with him, he's got that for you. You are you're full, man. You are full. You got something to give out. These people became sought after. Like everyone is like, yeah, I, 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 want, I want what they got stuff. The city no longer deserted. It's not a desolate place. Let's talk about construction work for us. Construction work for a Christian. Because I, want, I, I believe that we can live with the power of heaven in our hearts right now. I believe in the transforming power of Jesus and I believe he can do a wonderful work. He's constructing something in us that it's more than about this. I got my ticket to heaven, now I'm right. I'm, I'm, I think we're beyond, you need, if you're not here today with a ticket to heaven, you need to get one and we'll talk about that a bit later. 
But for a number of you, you've already got your ticket to heaven, but it's more than that, you see. Life is more than about a ticket to heaven. I love that you have the promise of eternal life. I love it. I live for it. But eternal life started and it continues every day. You got life. Jesus said he came to give life and it abundantly. And it abundantly. So I got life to live. I got more life to live every day. Not the, not, not the enemy wants. So he wants to build faith life in me. Do you know you need to build your faith life? That you, have a, you participate with the Holy Spirit and God, God to build and construct with Him your faith life. Paul said as an apostle, he would lay the foundation and that others would build upon it. And so we are building together the powerful works of, of the Holy Spirit through us and through us together. The, we just read in this, Isaiah was talking to us and he said, you got to build, to build a highway, right? You need to construct it, but you need to get everything out of the way. The Romans were brilliant at building roads. And so this was, uh, but... Uh, the Jewish people, they built up their road that would lead up to Zion, uh, that lead up to the city, of, which was Jerusalem, that lead up to the city of God where they put their temple and they would build up roads. And you had different sort of roads. You had your sort of local roads that were just worn by, you know, you got one of them in your back paddock or maybe, you know, around the back fence, the dog has worn a path. But you go out to a farmer's property and, and it's just one of those, you know, driven paths. And, you know, it's somewhat compacted and that's a local road. Road. And hopefully you could get to the back of the property. Um, but in a bad season of weather, you're on a local road, you're probably not going to get there. But you know, the farmer, before he, he has done that, he's created that road, there would have been things in the way, that, that big stones in the way that had to be moved. Because it's, it stops us going into what? into the direction and into the promises that we've got. So those stones have to be removed and put to the side. But if you're going to go to a larger road, if you want to put more things on this road, if you want to put chariots on this road, if you want to take an army along this road, the local road's not going to do. It's not going to give you access. You need something built up. And how they built it up was with aggregate. That would be different sized stones. All sorts of different sized stones that would be placed onto the um, compacted dirt and it'd be built up all over the place. You see, the Romans knew if you can build up big highways, you can go conquer cities, you can go conquer countries, you can go conquer and take back, take land that was never yours in the place. And we together, friends of God, aggregates, and we all look a bit different. Uh, you know, Joe and I look a bit different, um, you know. Uh, Terry looks different to Narelle. We all look a little bit different and we all got a part to play. But God wants to set up an army of the church of Jesus Christ. And he's calling you and I together that we would be the army of God. But we got to build up the road so people can access the temple, people that can access the, uh, 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 the place to go in God. And you and I become an access place to that because in Ephesians 3 it says this, that his intent was... That all of the principalities and all the powers and, and all, of the, uh, all of those dark things out there, all of those things would, hear, would be preached to and they'd hear the manifold wisdom of God through the church. That's you and I. Through the church. Ephesians 3, go read it up. Through his aggregate, he was going to send his mighty army to the people. You and I, we go, we're called, but before we go, we've got to build roads. We've got to build up our faith. We've got to build up one another's faith. That takes people into the kingdom of God. Our preparation will cry some clearing out and some building in. It'll take some clearing out and some building in. Be prepared to leave some waste behind. And add something strong. Here's an ancient, uh, here's a road that was an ancient road. Big stones. This was leading into the city. If you're going to take heavy, heavy equipment, heavy supplies, if you want to do serious battle, you've got to build up a serious road. 
you know, build up a serious faith. You know, not a man be pan be faith. I'm just waiting for to say that one. Not a man be pan be faith. Like Tony, when you know, Tony's got some manby pamby times where he's just like got excuses. He's like, what's manby pamby? That's my excuses. That's my fears. It's my coping mechanisms that help me, that send me the other way. I'm like, yeah, I've got to dig deep. I've got to dig deep. I'm going to create a platform that says I'm going to face the struggles that i got, but I ain't going to face it alone. Uh, I, I got the, I, I'm in this dark place, but I'm going to put my trust in the Lord because there's resurrection power around the corner. Are you with me? Have you got some faith today? You see, your faith is going to help build other people's faith. That's why I don't get on with this. Now you hear people say, oh, you know, um, you know the, the orphans of the church. Oh, you're a Christian. You don't need to go to church. Now, what that's about, friend, is you need Jesus to get into heaven. But church isn't just about you. It's about us. So oh, you don't need church to be a Christian. Well, no, you don't, you don't need church to go to heaven. You need Jesus to go to heaven. But if you want to outwork the power of God in your life, you need the person in the row next to you and the person in front of you. Let's stop this loneliness thing. Is, is a, like For me, it's like that place where I go, hold on a sec, you need someone. You need someone to encourage you, to build your faith. And I need you. I need you to encourage me. At the end of today, encourage me. Don't go home and complain to your kids about me. Uh, you know? And, and like we're a bit of laugh, we're a little laugh, but let's be honest, whether it was me or whether it was someone else, you went home and you had dinner and you had a bit of a crack at the leader in your world and, and, and you may as well be back, you may as well take your whole family back to that place where Moses was standing in the desert and they were all com com complaining and grumbling and they wanted to get rid of Moses and for your family to go into your future, you can't complain about the spiritual uh, identity of the group of people that God's put you in. He's put you in there for a purpose. He's put me in here for a purpose. He's put us together and we're aggregate. And you know, when aggregate, sometimes, you know, you walk along the aggregate, sometimes it's like if you're on bare feet, it might hurt a bit. But it carries an army. And if I'm worried about just a little bit of, you know, iron meets iron, well, what's that? Aggregate meeting aggregate. And it builds us together. And I'm not saying that's easy, friend. I think that's why we need the Holy Spirit because you and I are getting along. You and I be in the church. It's like your marriage, like if you're married, two becoming one. You can't do that by yourself. You need the Holy Spirit. And we need community. We need community. We need someone to stand around and say, hey, yeah, we, it was difficult, but it was worth it. It was, we went through a tough time, but we got through the other side of it. Well, how did you do that? Aggregate. Strong marriages develop strong kids, strong communities. I, I'm gonna, I'll put my hand up. Spend time on your marriage. It's gonna, when you do that, there's going to be a dark place. But then there's always light. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. God's building something great. Following the signposts. You know, this is it. I can go my own way. Oh, yeah, you are good at going your own way, friend. I know, because I am too. Who owns an Isuzu? <laughs> is it Isuzu? No, what is it? Uh, you can go your own way. You can go your own. Does anyone know that ad? Does your pastor watch too much TV? <laughs> Both. This is the great thing about God. It's like, I'll still be here. We're running off, obviously. The church will still be here. It's like the false prophet. Oh, the organised church is, is gone. It's never to be, be the same again. <laughs> Good on you, mate. No, the church will always, always exist because the plan of God won't be thwarted. You know what? Actually, you go to other countries in the world where it's so persecuted, it's, it's, it's most alive. It's in the darkest times that it shines so bright. Why are we so risk adverse? Oh, give God a go. Taste and see that the Lord is good, the Scriptures say. Give him a go. He likes bringing back lost things. Oh, I can't, you know, those Christian people, they've hurt me. Yeah, yeah. It's going to happen again. 
But what are you going to do this time? Are you going to love on them? Are you going to see that it wasn't actually about you? It was about their broken and hurt world. And maybe God put you there to love upon them and to call them into something greater. Maybe you even, maybe even you had to be a part of helping them see uh, some things. Maybe you had to speak to them about, you know, you, you, you can't. You can't do that to your wife. You can't do that to your kids. I think men, that's one of the things we need to do as men too. Like we we can't stand by and see other men slap our girls around. You know, that's not manly. This is a bit controversial. I'm going there a bit. But it's like, hey, blokes, you're not being a mate by closing your eyes on that one. In fact, you are... The guy to probably speak to them, pull them aside and, hey, hey, buddy, we don't do that. Why are they doing it? All sorts of hurt, all sorts of brokenness. We don't go to them because we've got a down pat. I don't, I, I'm not the best man in the world, but I learned some things, buddy. And I've, let's, let's come alongside each other and not judge each other, but say this, this is the better way. This is the better highway. If you want a highway to a great marriage, come on, mate, you've got to stop that. We'll arrest that behavior. There's a bit of aggregate going on. We're going to sharpen up some of, our, some of our stuff. The most difficult things I've had to face is one-on-one with people. It's one, com, coming into interpersonal relationship. And God is doing a work in us, using other people. I'm always concerned when we isolate, when we move away. I'm like, I don't I, you can go somewhere else and try and find somewhere else because I've done my dash with this bunch because my behaviour was, uh, there's something about my behaviour that was inappropriate. They just didn't like me. They didn't, and I've gone over here to find some love and acceptance over here. And you'll find it for a time until the aggregate starts to rub again. And the aggregate says, oh, come on, we just need to, we just need to work on that a bit. Can we work on that a bit? You know, there's a time, time to walk in the light. There's time, something wants to be redeemed. Who set up road signs. We're going to set up road signs. We'll move over to the scriptures there for Jeremiah 31, 21. It says this, set up road signs, put up a guidepost, take note of the highway. Anyone taking notes? See someone in the front line, good work. The road that you take, it's got a destination. Have you ever seen someone on a course that's heading down the wrong way? I don't know if you've ever done it, but I have just done it recently, gone down an exit that was the wrong way. I just got confused. And I was, like, I was, I was on my motorbike, so lucky nothing was coming the other way. I've been there before, I don't want to do that. But because I was on my motorbike, I was like, yeah, this is wrong. You know, and I look back and the signs are, when you look back and the signs are telling you, you know, I'm like, Whew. so I hit on the anchors and I'm like, because on my moto I can do some tricky things. So <laughs> and I'm like, Back on the path. Back on the path. You know, God won. God, God, you know, how many times do we, you know, this part, part of the beauty of the church is not for us to judge one another, but it's to show what path. The, there's a place amongst us that says, go down this path. But, but we don't like that. It's like, I just want to erect my own signs. Like, I'm just going, you know, if, the problem is, right, though, if I keep going down that road the wrong way, it doesn't matter, I can put signs up if I want. I can, like, this is the right way to go. I know it's the right way to go. Until the truck's coming the other way. This is the right way to raise my kids. This is the right way to speak to my father. This is the right way. And when we get this sense of right, righteousness in our own life instead of humbling ourselves and saying, well, what, what is the right way? What is the right way? It's like the Lord has sent three, four, five. Some of it, you know, people in your life, you've been Christian for a long time and the same thing has come up over and over again. And you thought it was just the leaders in each church that had a problem. 
And they're like, no, God has used that person. Or, you know, that whatever, it was a leader, it was whatever. Your mates had coffee over the table or whatever and they've been talking and the same issue has been coming up over and over and over again. Well, friend, learn to read the signs. That's why we have the Holy Spirit. We've got to spend time with the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit puts it inside of us to help one another. It's aggregate. We're going to build the way to the the mountain of God. We're going to build the way to his temple, build the way to uh, eternity. And he uses people to do it. And I don't like it when my mate says this about me. The thing about it is finding the appropriate person, finding a person you can trust and someone you go talk to. Who in your life do you actually go talk to? If you've got no one uh, to go to, then what signs have you really got in your life? Oh, I've got the word, brother. You can make the word say anything you want, friend. I've been so many counselling sessions where people have used the Bible to justify all sorts of wickedness. That's why we have three testimonies, the Holy Spirit, the Scriptures, and the body of Christ. They're all signposts. They're all signposts. What do we got here? This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is. And walk in it. And you'll find rest for your souls. What will you find? And that place is actually a good place. If you've got a council of people around you, you've got a good place. Because you've got people that will listen, that will love, that love you, and will, will be able to say that. But if, if, you, if we don't have that going in our life, we will just run to the next person that will appease, you know. They, they, they will sure affirm you in your feelings. But beware of the person that only affirms you for your feelings because they've got something going on for themselves. The good friend, the one that's close as a brother, can say something. They'll risk that relationship even to say to you, are you sure? Have you considered something else? Proverbs preaches into that, but But you said, we will not walk in it, Jeremiah 6.16. In those days at that time, declares the Lord, the people of Israel and the people of Judah together will go in tears to seek their Lord, their God. They will ask the way to Zion and turn their faces toward it. They will come and bind themselves to the Lord in an everlasting covenant that will not be forgotten. Friends, disciples are followers. I want to talk about uh, I want to talk about this. Um, can we um, skip to uh, the Matthew twenty eight sixteen? Next slide, thanks. Then the disciples, eleven of them, went to Galilee. Was there originally eleven? Uh, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and, and teaching what? Them too? Everything I have commanded you, and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Wow, that's incredible. He used to be, his plan was that the apostles would do that. I had one, one particular person who was in a ministry, finishing up their ministry, and he said, I want to declare in front of you all that I, um, that I, I, I did ministry because no, no man um, told me I didn't minister under man. I ministered, I, I did what God told me to do. It wasn't, in, you know, and I'm like, Right. How does that work? How can you do ministry without being subject to men and women? Because we're doing it for them. And there's always someone, God is always using people to develop me and, 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 and call me and to help me to see. There's always someone, discipleship is about your next step friend. Discipleship is for you to grow. It's going to be a next step. And there's always someone in that next step 
let me show you. Well, it was here. It was the apostles. They went. They went. They were sent. It wasn't like, right, yeah, all you apostles, you disciples, I tried my best and you all stuffed it, especially that Judas guy, not followed long by Peter. Yeah, how many of you have stuffed it up? I'm just going to come by my Holy Spirit and speak to you all individually because I can't trust a human being to do what I've called them to do. No, he didn't do that. He sent men and women to one another. God is sending you and I to the South Burnett. He's sending us. If we won't go, hopefully there's someone else who will take your place. But I just don't know. I can't get into your workplace. I can't go there. You can't get into my workplace. So I'm a sent one and you're a sent one. Let's look at the role of the discipleship is about transformational relationships. You see, the very first relationship is what? With the Father. How do I get there? The creator of the world. I get there through Jesus. He's the only one who can get me there. By the power of the Holy Spirit. But to get there, I need someone else down there. I don't know how you became an unbeliever. Um, became a believer. Sorry. <laughs> I can name the person who laboured over my salvation. Uh, maybe you can't, I can. There was a whole people, uh, there was a whole group of people involved in you coming into the kingdom of God. That's his process. That's how he works. You see, this is a, you may be an unbeliever here today. Well, your next step, friend, is to become a believer. And probably you're here today because uh, you've got a believer in your world. Someone who just has faith, who can he heard the Word and started to have their ideas transformed. They started to think differently from you. And so they got some answers that you don't have as an unbeliever. I got answers, friend, that you don't have as an unbeliever. Not because I'm super um, good looking. Or not because I'm um, anything really. It's what I have been given by faith in the Son of God. That's why I know you too can become a believer today, friend. You're here today, it was no accident. There was a transformation. But for you, for that transformation uh, to happen, there has to be, for you to take that next step, there has to be somebody in that next step. And for you to make that next step, you need to know that somebody is Jesus. There's only one way into eternity, and that's to put your trust in Jesus. It's to put your trust in Jesus. But you see, friends, there's a lot of believers. A believer doesn't make you a disciple. You can believe things about God, but that doesn't make you a follower. You see, there was a whole lot of people that were following Jesus uh, on earth and there was literally thousands of Him wanted to get on board with what Jesus did. And when some Jesus teaching came along that was a little bit hard, that was a little bit dark, which meant them to face the things in their own life and to face the, the concepts and attitudes and thoughts of the world where they had to start to go a little bit deeper, a little bit harder. They, 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 they believed, but see, their belief wasn't enough to keep them on the journey. And Jesus, uh, some of you will know the story, Jesus uh, turned around to the other disciples in that teaching and He said, well, you guys, you disciples, you may as well take off too. If you want to take off, now's the time to take off. And they were like, well, what are we? they're looking around like, we left everything. You see, that's the process of a, of a disciple. Friend, you can, you can believe. But if you want to 
move in the transformational power of God, we need to take step to become a disciple of Jesus. A disciple of Jesus always has someone discipling them. You see, that's your next step is to become a disciple. Is to get really serious about this. Like, oh, well, I've done church and I read my Bible. There's some aggregate for you, friend. There's some real powerful transformation that's going to come next, but it isn't just on thought changing. It's going to be, uh, it's going to, it's going to penetrate. It's going to be sharp all through your world. To change your thoughts, your feelings, your actions. To become a disciple. We're going to talk about, and then to become a disciple maker. Next slide. You see, what is a disciple? We're going to definitely have part two next week. <laughs> like everyone's up here ready to go home. I'm only just started. A disciple is someone who manifests what? That's a good Christian word. Say manifest. Just means it can be seen in you. It can be seen in a human being. That's all it means. That Jesus can be seen in you. Where? Manifesting the life of Jesus through their personality. Who I am. It's me. Through the gifts that I have and the talents that I use. You see, you can have a gift. Enjoy your gift. Thank you, God, for my gift. But a talent is always used. A talent you use. They live for Jesus, not themselves. You see, if the life of Jesus is to be manifest or to be seen in you, there's a process for you and I. First of all, you, you bump into His teaching. There's a process, I've got to get His teaching. His teaching, His Word. I'm going to be confronted with that because there's a beauty for me to under... But not just His Word, you have to understand it. There's understanding going on. That's why He has created teachers and preachers to bring understanding. Then Jesus was what? He was crucified. What's that? So uh, we just think about the final death. No, the crucifixion was about uh, the pat. We call it the passion. It's the events leading up to his death. It was like started there in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he said, "God, if this if this cup will pass me by, you know, if I don't have to drink this, you know, you just pass it by." but not my desires. But what's your desire, Father? Your desire be done. Your plan be done. Your hope be done. You see, a disciple has the crucifixion. Paul says, uh, I want to share in his sufferings. He's talking about the crucifixion. And I would want to, sh as much as I will share in his resurrection. But before you get to his resurrection, you got those dark times, you got the burial. What's the burial? I don't see you anymore. Jesus says, Is anyone who will come after me and deny himself? It's like. Oh, my life is not going to be about myself anymore. Well, that, that's not a popular thing today. Today is all about yourself is super awesome. You can, do it. you can do it. It's like, well, first of all, I want to go through the process of, man, I can do one, I can, you can do amazing things you can. But you can't tap into the spiritual life that God has for you. You can't tap into resurrection power until you say, not, my, not me, God, not me. 
You get it? Here's a manifest. I, we got to be able to. He's like when Jesus, like when people see that in you. When Jesus, when people see you in a dark time. You see, you de- when people see you be- denying yourself and saying, oh, I don't need that here. You have that. I don't know. Like, you know, here's my last 20 bucks. I got, I got pay coming. Here you go. Uh, I don't, you know, I can do this for you. That's that. Oh, self-denial. That's a process. The brilliant thing about that is that Three days later, he, he rose again by the what? Power of the Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Friend, God's got new life for you. You see, the old life is our uh, uh, old life. I'm going to go. The new Tony. That's a process. And then, of course, he heads the body, filled the body, and the body serves the world. Are you still going all right? I'm going to land here. But I, I, I'm going to encourage you to come back next week. Because we're just going to build on this. I want to build on this for you. Do I have, oh, that's a relationship. Do I have, a, that's supposed to say, do I have a relationship with a person in my next step? Like who are you hanging out with? Where do you find yourself going when you have hard times? When you have a hard time, where do you go? The best place to go is to a a, a disciple or a disciple maker, if that's where you want to be. Someone who knows is teaching his will. Someone who you've seen Oh, they've, they've denied themselves. I see that. I see the manifest life of Jesus in them. I see new life in that person. That's wonderful. Well, you can go there. Do I see service in that person? Because that's the ultimate test of laying our life down for one another, where they begin to serve one another. You know, we can have a lot of, a lot of good friends. And they can be out in the world and we can, you know, go here, go there, go there. But oh, to have a friend, to have a wise man. Matthew 7.30, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. It's a couple of slides ahead, guys, sorry. And only a few find it. Friend, today don't get embraced. Don't get lost in embracing everything. Life's a bit too short. You go around trying to fill our life with everything we possibly can and at the end of it have nothing. Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice like the wise man who's built his house on the rock. Praise you, Lord. You know, I just want to encourage you today. Like, you're on the pathway. You're on a good highway. You're building up your faith. You're building up your faith. And and a number of you are choosing to build up the faith of others. 
to build up a highway that others can get into the very presence of God. Next week, we're going to talk about rivers, highways and rivers. But the road you build isn't just for yourself, is it? And that's the nature of discipleship, is we're going there together. Who wants to go there alone? I don't want to go there alone. That's not really something just to celebrate, but to go there together, to build your build up the most holy faith. That is, you got God separated a life of faith for you and for me. And we have a responsibility to build up our faith and to build up the faith of others in the name of Jesus. And there's a process to go. I wonder if we could all close our eyes today. I wonder if you're sitting here today and you you aren't a believer. You haven't put your trust in the Lord Jesus. And you know, and you're you're like, I I don't know what my turn is. I don't, I haven't done that before. I don't know. You know, Jesus loves you. The, the, the answer is for you. Jesus is the answer for you. The question today is, do you want Jesus to be the God of your life, the Saviour of your life, to take your life, to take you into eternity? To, but you have to put your trust in Him today. You put your faith in Him today. And you can begin your journey of faith because He loves you so much that he sent Jesus to die upon the cross to take the take away the, all of that just rubbish all of the rejection all our rejection of God and he just made a way for you to come into eternity become a believer but that'll be only the beginning and that's okay your, your, your journey may start today if that's you today, you never made a decision to follow Jesus and you want Jesus to come and be in your heart, you want to start the journey, you realise that it's you and Him, you just lift your hands up, and lift your hand up in the air really and, I, and I'm going to start to pray a prayer with you. Yeah, I see that hand. Yeah, you can put it down. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. We're going to just put this, the whole church is going to pray together. We're going to put this prayer up. And we're just going to say this prayer together. And it's not a magic prayer. All as it is, it's just a starting prayer that we like to say to help you on your journey and begin you talking to your Father in heaven. Begin you talking to Jesus. Church, let's say this together. Dear Jesus, I believe in you. Thank you for forgiving me. Come into my life and I will follow you. Amen. After the service, we're going to sing a song and there'll be people out here to pray. If you put your hand up, I'd love you to take the next step because I'd love to meet you and I'd like to pray for you and, uh, and encourage you in the start of your new life with Jesus. But church, uh, there, there's something, there, there's a move upon the church in the South Bernard. There's a move upon us. There's something God is doing, something deep and wonderful that we're, we're, no, we're, getting, we're building. And to do that, God's going to create. He wants us to move from, just from being a believer to being a disciple. Someone's going to follow. And to be a disciple, you know, you need to hang around. You need to, to take that step into side. You need someone to disciple you. And you say, oh, well, I do that on the TV rubbish. You can't. It's just, it happens through uh, lives. It happens through people. You see, the people on the YouTube can't be in the room with you and see your dirty stuff, right? 
And it's not like that God just wants to air our dirty stuff. But, uh, you know, uh, at that place where you, you look into that, but someone who walks to you, walks with you, says, oh, hey, come on, friend. We've got something better to see. We've got something better to do. You see, you need someone in your life that can, that can stand beside you and to help with you take that. And it's the same with disciples. There's a, there, I believe that there's a disciple maker spirit upon our church where you can go and make disciples. You can be influential and, 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 and powerful and to be able to take followers and to turn them into people who can make other followers. And you're going to go gather them because Jesus said, I'm going to turn you into fishers of men. And there's fishers of men people. If that's you today by the power of the Spirit of God, just stand to your feet because there's an anointing and there's a prophecy for you as you believe that God is calling you to be a disciple maker and that's not just to see people saved. I don't want you to stand up if you're an evangelist. I want you to stand up if you believe that God is calling you to take people and grow them and see and go through the hard times with them and even when it's smelly, even when it's hard, even when they say nasty things to you, even when you think you're ready to give up, the Spirit of the Lord is calling you a disciple maker and you're not going to give up on people. You're not going to give. There's a Spirit right now, I prophesy upon you that uh, there's going to be, uh, you've already experienced the, the, the give up. I'm just going to give up on this, but I just need to, uh, I've had enough, I've had enough. No, the Spirit of the Lord saying, I'm calling you, you're not going to give up. You got this, you got this, the disciple maker has this Spirit that says, I'll never give up. If you're standing up, just say it, I'll never give up. I'm not going to give up on Lord. You didn't give up on me. I'm not going to give up on them. I'm not going to give up on them. I'm not going to give up on them. I think there's another about three or four people that are going, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, that's me, but I don't want to stand. Come on, just stand up. You need to stand up. You need to stand up because you're standing up for the people that God's calling you to do. So just stand to your feet right now. That's it. Just stand. Don't care. Don't care what your mum's doing. Don't care what your brother's doing. Don't care what your best mate's doing. Don't care what your girlfriend's doing. You're standing up. Because these people who stand in the gap and say, I'm not going to let my, the people at work, I'm not going to let my family, I'm not going to let them live a life that's on the highway to hell. But I want to take them on the highway that enters the city of God in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to hold their hand. And, I, and I'm going to put them, I'm going to take them. I'm, I'm going to put them in my car and bring them if I have to. I'm going to pay for them to go to church. I'm going to pay for their Bible if I have to. It's going to cost me something. It's going to cost you something. And Jesus says that uh, any man who uh, wants to follow me, there's a cost of discipleship. And I thank you, Lord God, that you always provide. And for these people who are going to be, be dis- putting their standing up to be disciple makers, to take people, that they will be builders of faith in the name of Jesus. They'll be builders of faith. They will, they will know how to be teachable. They will be disciples themselves. Because friends, no one can be a disciple maker without being a super awesome disciple in the name of Jesus. And that's just penetrating your heart right now. So I want to be a I want to be an awesome. Are you gonna build roads? You're gonna build roads. You're gonna this is uh, one thing. Uh, if it's for you, you can put your hands up in the air. But I just sense some some of the Spirit of the Lord saying you're gonna have conversations that you don't want to have with people, but God's calling you to have it. You're going to remove stones. Some of these stones are boulders, but you need need the the love and the grace uh, to do it. But this is the thing. Don't you dare try and move that thing if you don't have someone in your life that you've said yes to moving those things. You are an inappropriate disciple maker. You need to have someone in your life that will be able to move boulders. Because you're going to get boulder moving. I just sense there's, a, there's, a, there's faith to move boulders. Because you've, 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 you've allowed the boulders, you've allowed others to remove boulders, to remove whatever it is, bad thoughts, bad attitudes. Attitudes have been removed because someone else in your life confronted that with you in the name and stood beside you. You see, friend, you're gonna, there, there's some, there's some way making going on and he's, using, and he's calling us to, be, to, to, to partner with that in the name of Jesus. Just throw up your hands if you're ready to move some boulders. You need grace for it. You can't do this with judgment. This is really important. There's an anointing for you to move boulders. 
Well, you need the power of the Spirit. You need to humble yourself before the Lord. True disciple makers know the power of the Spirit to see strongholds broken in other people's lives through the power of love and grace and peace and joy. Holy Spirit, come upon you, your fishermen and your fisherwomen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, today may they affirm the life of Jesus. May we affirm the life of Jesus in other people. May we affirm it. See, there is the Lord in your words. See, there is the Lord in your heart. See, there is the Lord in your service. See, there is the Lord in your self-denial. You see, there is the Lord that is taken from old to new. You see the Lord and you see Him lifted up in others in the name of Jesus. And I believe right now this is going to be a spirit of prophecy to come upon you that's able to speak life and speak hope. You see, friend, make no mistake, this is not a ministry of calling out the bad in people. This is a ministry of prophesying the Lord and His life into their life in the name of Jesus. If you don't understand that, speak to a minister later on. Speak to one of the people. But you see, you're gonna, it's not about calling out the bad. It's about calling them into the life of what the, of what the house of God should look like, what the temple should look like. So you're going to begin to prophesy the goodness of God into hearts and lives in Jesus' name. Prophesy the goodness in Jesus' name. Oh, hey, we're doing, God's just doing some work on us, isn't He? <laughs> the band's just saying, Tony, move on. I'm ready to move on. Are you ready to go into your next step? You see, our next step just to affirm this in us is praise. I'm just going to get some praise on. Are you ready with me? Because all this can only happen when we depend on God, when we depend on Jesus. Friend, you gave your life to Jesus today. You just put your trust in Him. You just put your trust in Him. You can depend on Him. And today we just bring praise to Him. We worship Him. We say you're number one. We got some praise in the building? Yeah. We got some praise in the building? It's like a river. It's like when you jump into that thing, you just get going. Awesome. There's a line in this song that says, I don't care what it looks like. I'm just going to be passionate about praising Him. So I want to invite you today. Maybe you need to do something you haven't done before. Maybe you need to actually put your hands together. Maybe you need to do one of these ones. Maybe you need to do one of these ones. But there's a release of praise in the house today. And I want to invite you to take your next step in your passionate praise for Jesus. Whatever comes, whatever goes, there is one thing that I know. You are faithful. Yeah, you are faithful. So I speak out your word. Has the power to change my world. You're my breakthrough. Yeah, you're my breakthrough. Come on. I will trust you. I will trust you. Oh, you are never ending river, flowing full of power, washing over me. And I will run into the water. Jesus, take me deeper, saturating me. of despair. You are God. You are there. You're always with me. You're always with me. I will trust you. Trust you. I will trust you. Oh, you are never-ending river, flowing full of power, washing over me. Run into the water, Jesus, take me deeper, saturating me. Ready? 
looks like I'm diving in Nothing will stop this passion Cause I'm praising Him I don't care what it looks like Cause I'm diving in Nothing will stop this passion Cause I'm praising Him I'm praising Him You are never ending river Flowing full of power Washing over me Run into the water, Jesus, take me deeper, saturating me. I don't care what it looks like, I'm diving in. I can will stop this passion when I'm praising Him. I don't care what it looks like. Um, if you'd like to respond, if you would like prayer for anything, whether it's healing or you said yes to Jesus, I want to be a follower of Jesus. I want to be a disciple of Jesus. Um, we'd love to pray for you. If you just want someone to stand with you and, and come alongside you and pray for you, then we'd love to do that. So this altar is open now. You can come and, and, and we'll, we'll come and pray with you. But also I'd like to just open Highway Church Part 2. Come and hang out with us. Have a cuppa. And God's going to do something mighty and powerful. Share your testimony. What has He been saying to you this week? Have a great week. God bless you.